Um, and so, uh, you know, I think it was just a brilliant. Now you've been to some set. Yeah. Would you consider if they asked you doing a proper episode? Well, I, I stress, I think it's highly, highly unlikely they would ever ask okay. me. Uh, but of course, of course, I, I, I do it. Yeah, it's a shock, you, yeah. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't shy away from No, it. no. I mean, you kind of have doubts about these things. You don't jump into it with an enormous amount of confidence. I mean, I did feel when I went down to do the children in need, and we had to do it. I was doing Spamalos at the time. Uh, in London, and uh, I had a beard. So on the Saturday night after the show, I had to shave my beard <laughs> off, jump in a car, be driven down to Cardiff, and then be on the set. I think it's sort of like nine o'clock the next morning. Um, and it was all a bit of a whirlwind, and I, I had the scene, and unfortunately I, I knew it. Um, but it was a bit of a shock. I felt very much like it wasn't my territory. You know, yeah. we did Doctor Who at Television Centre with fairly you know, um, wobbly sense, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but they were—they were, they were of, it, it was yeah. of its time. You know what I mean? It was—it was how television was done in those days. Uh, so I've no complaints about about that. But you know, down there they have what they call a standing set, yeah. uh, and it, it's obviously completely different to my TARDIS concert. It has wonderful bits that I, you know you, you keep moving about, you can press, which I did on mine, but they used to drop off on mine. <laughs> <laughs> But I was doing much the same thing, and it did strike me that, um, that that David Tennant did it in very much the same way as I did it. He just goes around pressing everything he can think of to press, and then they put the special effects on afterwards, which is exactly what I used to do. Uh, and, and so I did that on his set. And he said to me at one point, he kept coming to this particular lever, and he said, um, I saw that lever wasn't in that position, and I said, I said, oh, that's good, I keep moving it. He said, that, he said, that is the only lever that I have a designated use for. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the handiest lever, so of course I kept moving it back and forth and it was opening the door or something like that. Um, but it was great. Uh, uh, but as I said, I, I, after a couple of hours on the set, um, I really got into it and you know, then I could have carried on, but unfortunately you know, it was an eight minute scene or something. It would have been a ten minute scene, but we spoke so quickly. <laughs> I don't think they anticipated um, uh, the speed at which we. I, they knew that David spoke very quickly, and I do as I do as well on the set. So we rattled this scene off in a very short amount of time. You've had a very long and varied career. Yeah. What, what made you want to be an actor? Because you didn't come from a theatrical family. No, I think um, absolute and total failure at everything else. Um, really sort of spurred me on to be an actor. I think I ended up with three O-levels. Well, the first time I took one, I ended up with one O-level. I think and I got that with the lowest grade possible, grade <laughs> six, English, English language. Uh, and then I retook uh, some, and I eventually ended up with three, which, which really wasn't enough to do anything with. Um, and I don't think, I'd like to think it wasn't because I was uh, um, stupid. I think I just, I enjoyed school, but I didn't enjoy working very much. So I had fun, you know, the teachers used to say, if you put as much effort into the, you know, the, sort of the fun bits of school, <laughs> into the academic side as you put into the fun bit, you end up with more exams. But, um, so I, I couldn't go to university and I couldn't go to teacher training college, which a lot of my, you know, my contemporaries at school went. And uh, I, I had an interest in amateur dramatics, and so I just applied to a drama school and miraculously got in. Uh, and it was it was great, you know. It was, but it, it wasn't sort of like a burning ambition that fired me from the age of sort of five. It was so you very much. You want one of these child actors? Or no, I used to work behind the scenes. Actually, I worked, used, back, used to work backstage in the curtains and things like that. Techie, yeah. Um, but once you once you go to drama school, it's just uh, fantastic. You don't have to write your name for three years. Do you value drama school? Hmm? Do you value value drama school? I, I think well, not not really. I mean, I think they work for some actors, some potential actors, because they're a very sort of raw kind of uh, uh, actors who just aren't used to the whole thing, and for them it is useful. You're being but, by failed actors, really. Well, yeah, you are. Well, I mean, I suppose you could say, you know, you're, 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 the whole. I shouldn't say this, I've got a whole family of teachers, yeah. But you know what I mean? You could, you could make that argument about teachers if you like, but that's not quite true. <laughs> he said quickly. Um, but, uh, 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 you know, they're not only that. I mean, a drama school, they do what they are there to sort of, you know, 
Helping. It's the same as think teachers are there, you know, to, because they like the idea of, you know, helping young people out into the world. But I dare say, you know, at some point, you know, uh, uh, drama teachers wanted to be actors, and I dare say teachers sometimes wanted to be uh, other things, and they they end up. But that doesn't mean to say that, you know. Um, Did you work straight away when you got drama school? Um, I did actually. Yeah, I was pretty lucky. I was pretty, I mean, can I just finish about drama schools? Yeah, What's quite important is that I don't, I mean, my own daughter <clears throat> um, had, did not go to drama school and uh, she just turned around to me one day and said, you know, I want to be an actress. And, I, and the temptation is to think that I in some way, uh, you know, helped her do, do those things, which in fact I didn't. Um, but she had lived, you've got to remember, she was just brought up around theatre and around television, so it was no great mystery to her, and she knew how things worked. And I think that's the point, that's where drama schools help. They, they just teach you how various things work in theatre and in television, but I don't think you need to go to drama school. I mean, a lot of it uh, is to padding, a lot of it is padding. I think you could probably do a drama school course in about six months, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you put your mind to it, and you've got it all, not you know, notwithstanding that you have the talent to act, uh, but that can't really, can't really be taught. Um, sorry. Anyway, then I left. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Get terribly serious. Went to work in the tax office. Uh, I went to work in the tax office. Yeah, which I live right next to now. <laughs> um, it's not. It's not the building anyway. It's no longer a tax office. Sadly, but every time I drive past Regal House in Twickenham, I go. That's where I was up there. Um, yeah, um, but then uh, indeed I was going to. Be, I, I was an actor for a while, and then it, things dried up, and that's when I went to work in the income tax office. And um, I would, in fact, have become permanent had I not lied about my qualifications, <laughs> because I, I was I, I joined as a temp, temp, and you don't have to produce the certificates then. So when no acting work was coming along, and they said to me, yeah, you know, you're quite good at this, why don't you sort of join as a civil servant? I said, yeah, why don't I do that? You know, it's regular money. So they gave me the forms, and I filled them all in, and I got to the bottom, and it said, uh, you know, list your GCEs, and produce the certificates. And then I thought, well, I know I'm really doomed. <laughs> one of the next morning said, oh, I've decided I really want to be an actor. <laughs> Move on to your yeah. time in Doctors. Oh, right. Um, we talk about it. Okay. Do, do you look back fondly at your time in Doctors? I do, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. It was a fantastic time. I mean, it was full of, of frustrations, which, like, I suppose a bit like bad holidays, fade a bit, uh, until I sit down at those, uh, on those DVD commentaries and talk about it. And <laughs> then you remember all the things come flooding back. Um, but <clears throat> but it was full of you know it was full of wonderful things and full of terrible things. It, uh, when I did Doctor Who, it was at a time when they would turn the lights off at ten o'clock on studio days, regardless of whether you'd finished. The unions held total sway, uh, and the, and they just the, as the lights would go out, well they'd stop the VT machines, uh, uh, and we'd be completely stuck. Um, uh, uh, and so we were always. The last hour of any studio day was a mad, mad panic to get things done. And sometimes they'd be done very sloppily. And, uh, you know, I dare say people watching the programmes don't notice it, really. Um, but we did at the time. You know, sometimes we'd be in a different set, we wouldn't know where the camera was going to go, and it was, a, it was chaos. But I was also the doctor. Do you have any say in scripts? You've got a script and you might have a bit. Do you have any say? I had no. I had no absolute sway. I mean, I could obviously... I did try many, many times. I mean, I felt... One of the problems I came up against was after Tom Baker, because John Nathan Turner hadn't really got on with Tom very well. And there had been um, a sort of undergraduate humour element that came into Doctor Who in Tom's time. Uh, uh, that was because of Douglas Adams being the script editor. <clears throat> and uh, lots of sort of in-jokes were going in, and John Nathan Turner hated them. So when Tom left, he took every element of humour out. And I, I love putting, I love humour in things anyway, so I was always trying to put it in. Uh, but I had to do it kind of sneakily, so you'd have to get them past John Nathan Turner and persuade them that it would work. Um, but that was the problem. But I had no, I had no sound. I could not say, I hate this script, rewrite it. 
I could go, you know, how about, what about if we try this, or what about if he does this, or if he says that. Um, and then he'd come up with various ideas about companions, and I'd say, no, why don't we just blow him up? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, yeah, so he, he came up with various ideas about companions, I wouldn't necessarily agree with. You didn't have to audition for the role. John Nathan Turner asked you. Yeah, he just rang me up yeah. one night and said, well, I'd like to play the doctor. Did you consider turning it down? I did, yeah, I did, yeah. Because it, <clears throat> you know, I was, it's, it's what's odd now is that you almost think of the, the doctor as being young. But when I first did the doctor, you never dreamt of having a young doctor. You know, the doctor was always... <coughs> I did start a trend, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's true. So, I mean, I just my first reaction was, I'm too young to play this. And I thought the only thing I had going for me was I could move a bit quicker than the others. <laughs> so I did a lot of running up and down corridors very quickly and speaking very quickly. I, I think John Nathan Turner would update the show. Yeah. And having a younger doctor was the sort of way forward. I think he wanted to attract the ladies. Well, I, I think you're probably right. Very nice of you to think that I would do that, but, um... <laughs> hang on a minute, it's going to be interesting. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I have one? Oh, certainly. She <laughs> <laughs> put me in my place. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one off the bar later as well. I'm the place. <laughs> <laughs> Colin would buy me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Colin. <laughs> You being high to attract the ladies? Well, <clears throat> I think he wanted to make it <laughs> a younger image. But then, in the same way, if he did that in, uh, um, for the ladies, he then went and really made a mess of it with the men because he then covered up both the companions. Having put a younger doctor in, he then thought, I can't have young, attractive girls in skimpy outfits. So he covered them up in my first season from head to foot. So he kind of shot himself, as it were, in the foot. Because um, he would obviously he lost the uh, you know the, the dad's element. Um, okay, we're getting the young females. Yes, uh, true, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm glad I did it. I'm, I'm very glad I did. You don't look back and regret it. Oh no, <clears throat> no, it very much kind of uh, got my name known. You know, I was known as mm. the bloke in the vet series mm. before <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, but when I'd done Doctor Who, they kind of knew. Uh, Did you do any research? Did you watch any old tapes or anything? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, I, I, well, I, what I decided was that Tom Baker had done it for seven years, so I didn't really worry about him at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, because you know people knew Tom Baker, but I wanted to go back to the old the doctors that I first met, so William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, and John Pertwee. So I rewatched their episodes, some of their episodes, mm. and just tried to bring elements of them into my character. Mm. My favourite Doctor, uh, uh, as was well documented, was Patrick Trout. Mm. Um, so I wanted to bring elements of him and of William Hart, who was the first Doctor. Was it true that Patrick Trout told you to just do three seasons and then leave? Yeah, no, it exactly. sounds like a, a thing. It's absolutely true, because what, what happened... If, um, was there, there's, a, there's what they call the horseshoe car park in front of Television Centre and uh, it's mainly reserved for executives on the sixth floor it, unless you are someone uh, playing an important part you see now I, I, I had worked with Patrick Trout once in an episode called Peter Glenn's so I sort of knew him but I, I, I drove up to Television Centre one day and Patrick was in the car in front of me um, and he turned. He was having to turn his car around because they wouldn't let him in the car park oh. um, anymore. Because obviously, when he, when he, yeah, I got in because I was I, I was the doctor and he wasn't anymore. Um, <laughs> and so anyway, uh, he just said, uh, "Do three series and get out. Do three series and get out." Um, and it wasn't only that wasn't the only reason I did three series. It was that I'd done three of all creatures. I'd done a comedy series, um, sink or swim, for three series, and, and three series just seemed a, enough. It was not, not too little. Did you always have that in your head when you're going to do three? Yeah, I did. I didn't rule out doing four, but um, I kind of knew it was frustrating. I was quite uh, I was quite young, and I re remember seeing contemporaries of mine in the rehearsal block coming in and doing things. <coughs> going away and then a couple of months later they'd be back doing something else. But I was still playing the doctor and I just wanted to do other things, I think. I mean, it, it's, it's good for security, but you always think, well, 
Hollywood could call or, you know. Well, that, I mean, that's the great thing about, great and the terrible thing about unemployment as an actor is that your heart kind does kind of sink when you get a long-term job. Mm. You think you'd be going, hooray, fantastic, mm. but when you're looking forward to two, maybe three years of the same job, mm. it means that magical phone call can't come. Can't or if it does come, you're going to miss out. So, yeah. in a, in a way, have it both yeah, yeah. There's, a certain, there's a certain kind of excitement from being unemployed, sitting at home on the sofa, <laughs> watching a day, <laughs> ring, damn you! <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, yeah. We'll follow Mr. Spoon. Button room. Button room. Yeah, after the